All right, we're here at American Idol, the line of probably two or three thousand people. My name is Steve. My friend Richard here have a very important message to speak to you about. You may have heard it further up the line, but we love you so much we want to give it to you again at no extra charge. I only want to ask you one favor, please. Hold your applause to the end. Thank you, news. And so you'll see that we are legitimate. I take off my sunglasses, put my hat back here so you can see my face. Looks like an angel, doesn't it? Thank you very much. Here's my friend Richard. Like Steve said, we're going to disappear in just a few minutes. But we have a very important message, and I'm, I'm just hoping that your hearts and minds will be open for this very important message because there's nothing more important than your eternal destiny. You know, Benjamin Franklin once said in the whole world only that the millions of people don't pay taxes, legally or otherwise. So that leaves us with death as the only sure thing in life. It's something we just don't like to think about, but we're all part of an ultimate statistic. Ten out of ten people will die. Your number may be up today, my number may be up today. Statistics show that today around the world, over 150,000 people will die. Many of them, like you and me, with plans and hopes for the future. It doesn't matter if you could be rich, you could be poor, black, white, tall, short, skinny, fat, we're all going to die. So here's the question. If you were to die today, would you be going to a place called heaven or a place called hell? Now you might have heard my friend Steve talk about hell. Hell is a place where good people go and heaven is a place where sinners go. Well, does it make sense, right? Well, let me understand this here. Heaven is a place where sinners who have been repent, who have repented and put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ are right now. Hell is a place where good people who thought they were good enough to go to heaven are in hell right now. Here's a quick test to see where you will go. All I need from you is for you to have an open heart, have an open mind, and listen to your conscience. Your conscience tells you right from wrong. The ninth commandment says, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not lie. Have you ever told a lie, a half-truth, a fib, a white lie, or a bald-faced lie to cover your tracks? If you've ever told a lie in a lifetime, well, that would make you a liar. I mean, let's get real. It's just like if you were to kill one person, you'd be called a murderer. The Eighth Commandment says, thou shalt not steal. Be honest. It doesn't matter the value. It could be as little as taking a penny, a pencil, a paper clip, cheating on an exam, taking too long a lunch break. If you've ever stolen something in your lifetime, well, that would make you a thief. The third commandment says, Thou should not use the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Have you ever said something like, Oh my, G-O-D? You know when you use God's name to express disgust or uselessly without cause, that's called blasphemy. And God says he will not hold him guiltless who misuses his name. And when you think about it, you never hear anybody say, Oh my, Adolf Hitler. But yet... <laughs> if you use God's name, the God that gave you life, the God that gave you eyes to see with ears to hear with the mind to think with, if you use his name in vain, that means you don't love God. God is your enemy. One more commandment. The seventh commandment says, thou shalt not commit adultery. But guys, listen to what Jesus said about that commandment. He said that if you even look at a woman to lust after her, you've already committed adultery with her in your heart. Have you ever looked with lust? Now, I'm not going to go through the other commandments, but don't understand this, that if you've broken one or all of the commandments, that's called sin. And if you've been open and honest with yourself, you'd have to say that you're guilty of breaking those commandments. And if you've done those things, then God sees you as a lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterate heart. And the Bible says that all liars will have their part in the lake that burns with fire. It says, do not be deceived, no thief, no blasphemer, no adulterer will enter the kingdom of heaven. God is holy, holy, holy. And one day, He's going to judge the world in righteousness. And everything you've ever done, even your thought life, will be brought to the light. Oh my God. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the bad news. And I pray that you are so concerned Go ahead. They're give you that you want to hear the good news. The good news is this. No one needs to go to hell. God did something wonderful. Oh my gosh. God You're going to hell. Wonderful. God did something wonderful for you 2,000 years ago so you would not have to go to hell. Remember, you break one commandment, that's called sin. You sin one time, the penalty is eternity in hell. 
but God became a man 2,000 years ago in the person of Jesus Christ. He was fully God and fully man. He suffered and died on a cross for all your sins. He was buried for three days and rose again to give you the hope of eternal life. If you believe that, if you trust in Jesus Christ as payment for your sin, and you repent of that sin, God will forgive you and grant you everlasting life. God demonstrated his love for us in this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus said, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Don't put your trust in Buddha. Don't put your trust in J. Krishnamurti. Or do not put your trust what? in oh, any other no. guru Here. or false prophet. You yeah, must put your trust in Jesus Christ. Right Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. Today is the day of salvation. There is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. That name is Jesus Christ. So I plead with you today. Fall upon the mercy of God. Fall upon the love of the Savior. Jesus said, you cannot see the kingdom of God unless you're born again. So, please, don't trust in your own goodness. You cannot be good enough for making the heaven. The Bible says there is no one good, not even one. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So please, think about what I'm saying, because you have two choices. You have two choices. You must make one of them. One, ignore what I say, laugh under your breath, and mock me as you leave. And when you end up in hell, after you die, you'll see I was right. That gives me no pleasure to think about that. The other choice, repent and trust in Jesus Christ. When you do that, the old is gone, the new has come. You'll be a brand new creation. Your life will change. And you will no longer be enemies of God. You'll be friends with God. So please, have a great day today at American Idol. I hope you all get great seats and your favorite idol wins. But remember this, unless you repent, you too will perish. But it's not God's will that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. God bless you again. Have a great day.